163. 160, 163. She's blown away. I am <laughs> astonished. Get on the backs of the wings. Oh God, it's gorgeous. Mm. Hey guys, it's Carla here again in my kitchen for the last episode of the grilling season. And you might be saying, Carla, why are you indoors? It's V hot. We waited for the hottest, hottest, hottest day. And then we knew that this was the day to grill again. And today for the season finale of grilling season, I am going to be making spiced chicken under a brick and cauliflower too. These things go great together. So it's another omnivore's delight. You have your vegetarians, you have your chicken people, you have your people who don't like vegetables, you have your people who like chicken and vegetables, and everybody can come together. Mm. That's what it's all about. Hell yeah. Smash them under a brick and bring them together. <laughs> so I do have an emotionally charged story about this brick. It's one of the bricks that we bought when we were building the brick oven outside and um, the whole surface of the outdoor fireplace is lined with fire bricks and there were extras. So that's how long I've had this brick. Wow. So we're gonna start this recipe inside because pretend it's yesterday and pretend tomorrow, today, is when you're gonna grill. Yesterday, make the spice mix, set it aside. You're gonna butcher the chicken in a special way to make it pressable and you're gonna spice it up and you're going to cut the cauliflower in a way that also makes it pressable and spice it up. And then we go outside, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Today is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. The chicken gets cooked under a brick and cauliflower too. The other thing you need, <laughs> water. Stay hydrated, remember your charcoal, don't fall on the fire. Three rules. <laughs> I'm very excited about the spice rub. It has things that I rarely use, like caraway seeds. They're delicious. They should be in the seed rotation. Close your eyes and imagine rye bread. That's caraway. And then fennel seed, which I was like, maybe they'll taste great together. Turns out they do. I love fennel, I put it in kind of everything. Turmeric, delicious flavor, deep, bitter notes, gives an amazing color to the finished bird, like that gorgeous orangey golden hue. Peppercorns, black pepper, and a little bit of sugar, just because you've got a little bit of bitterness coming from the turmeric and a little bit of like that spice from the pepper and also the sugar will help with browning. Lemons in the spice mix, lovely. And then salt, of course. Three tablespoons of caraway seeds. Two tablespoons of whole black peppercorns. Two tablespoons of fennel seed. One tablespoon of sugar. It's gonna get loud. It smells great. Turmeric, tablespoon. Two tablespoons of kosher salt. Now we're gonna do our limones. I'm just gonna do this with my hands. It smells quite delicious. Vegetable butchery. Keeping in the spirit of the whole grilling season, I have not yet grilled the cabbage with these spices. It was just that when I was working on grilling the cauliflower and getting the timing right, making sure it tasted good, I was thinking, well, when we do the episode, what are the things gonna come up when I say, spin it, and the, the different bubbles come up. And I was like, um, cabbage, Napa cabbage, Savoy cabbage. Also, if you could get a, just the biggest cluster of Hen of the Woods mushrooms that you've ever seen in your life, do those. So when you cut the outer guys off, the florets are gonna crumble. You're gonna get like two, maybe three nice steaks out of the middle. But if you're cutting in a place where there isn't stem, it's gonna break into florets, totally fine. They're all gonna get grilled except for the really little guys. You're gonna set those aside for making pasta with melted cauliflower sauce or for making the grated, the farro and the cauliflower stir fry. Also, cast iron season, don't forget. The goal here is to cut the cauliflower into steaks. Yeah, that's steaky. Plants are cool. Love plants. <laughs> My question about the cabbage, I think that it's gonna make a better situation if I go this way. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. I just feel, here, yeah, I sure. feel it this way. Yeah. Who knows? This is how we learn things. But that's see, good. like that's a cool pattern that's too. Good. Yeah, this is the way to go. 
it's a little bit like grilling an onion. Like some of these papery guys are gonna go their own way, but like Fleetwood Mac always said, you can. You can go your own way. <laughs> you can go your own way. So now everybody gets oil. It'll help everything stick. The spice mix is going to yield like a generous half cup. So this is a quarter cup measure, which I'm just gonna kind of set aside so that I don't just get so lost in the experience of seasoning my cauliflower and cabbage that I forget about the chicken. Just a little precautionary measure. Yesterday's cauliflower. This cauliflower will be refrigerated overnight. And I didn't have a, a cabbage yesterday, so we're gonna have one guy who got to go overnight and one guy who just got seasoned and I'm sure they're both great. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna spatchcock the chicken. I will preface this by saying, you can ask your butcher to do this and they should be very happy to do it. Take out the backbone and flatten it. If you're gonna do it yourself, it's very, very easy. Um, as far as special equipment goes, you just need a really good pair of sharp shears. These are Joyce Chen's. I love them, even though they are small, they are mighty and they're just fabulous and they do a great job with this. Flip the chicken over so you can see the backbone. It's just easier to cut it out if you go from the tail end, let's say. So little cuts, get in there. And then I'm going to position my shears as close as I can to the backbone without trying to cut through the middle of it. So kind of where the thigh and the backbone are coming together, that's where I wanna go. All right, halfway there, went from the tail up to the back of the wing, spin it around. The second side, for whatever reason, is always a little bit trickier than the first, but you'll figure it out. In another way, it's easier because you can kind of pull a little bit against it and it makes it easier to see where to put your cuts. Save your um, chicken backbone for stock. And for level one, the only thing left to do is turn it back over and give it a good press. And that's just to like flatten the breastbone. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, great. Do you guys watch chiropractor videos on YouTube? It's a little bit like that. The chicken is spatchcocked, period. You could be totally done, okay? So, beautiful. All of this skin is gonna be exposed very evenly and equally. And then on the underside, this is where a lot of the flavor can get absorbed, formerly known as the inner sanctum. There's my spice mix. I'm gonna go pretty heavy on the inside. All of the parts. Gotta put suntan lotion everywhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is my armpit. Terrible. Not this bird. Nope. At this point, chicken is spiced both sides and uh, you can just fold it in half. You could put it in a Ziploc bag, you could put it on a half size rimmed baking sheet and put it in the fridge, you don't have to cover it. And now 24, 48, 72 hours, keep it in the fridge. Um, even if you have two hours and then you're gonna grill later in the afternoon, this is beneficial to do ahead of time. And that's it. Now we can finally go outside where it's estimated to be 100 degrees. Wow. So I however dry I look right now, <laughs> just remember it because it's about to not be my reality. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We're going into a new world. Hot. The hottest world. Hot and humid. We'll meet you by the grill. We'll meet you by the we'll ground. Meet you by the we'll ground. meet you by the we'll ground. A couple of things I have done for prep. The fire is set up for indirect heat. So that means that there is coals under 30, 40% of the grilling surface. And that's gonna give me a hot side and a cooler side. The chicken's gonna actually go on the cooler side and we're gonna have heat circulating around. It's gonna turn this into an oven. So those coals are coming to temperature. I have a few pieces of equipment. I've got two pairs of tongs so that when I flip the chicken, I can hold on to it by either its wings or by its um, drumsticks and pick it up and turn it over. That makes life easy. I brought out my fish spatula just in case there's any skin sticking and we can kind of gently go under there and maneuver 
And then those fantastic bricks that we spoke about earlier are wrapped in like a double layer of heavy duty foil. And I've got two of them. Well, I got a lot of things to press. I have got a paper towel with some vegetable oil, which I'm going to use to oil up the grill grates after they are scrubbed clean. And now I'm ready to grill. Okay, yesterday's chicken today. <laughs> We've brought it downtown. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil. And even though the chicken has its own fat, which is gonna render and kind of lubricate the whole situation, um, a little bit of fat will kind of just get that process going. This might be counterintuitive, so listen up. It's gonna go down bone side, skin side up, open side, closest to the fire. The fire is gonna be the hottest at the very beginning, and I don't wanna start with the skin over the hottest part of the fire. It's going to start rendering too fast, it's gonna get dark too fast, and it might burn. Very happy with the positioning. And now before I cover this and turn this into essentially a very smoky oven, I'm gonna put the bricks down, just trying to get as much of the brick over as much of the surface area as possible. The brick is pressing the chicken flat. So it is making the maximum amount of contact with the surface area and making it in a very bonded kind of a way. It's also going to shorten the cooking time just by the act of pressing something down shortens the cooking time. And then um, the spatchcocking itself is making the cooking extremely even because everything is about the same thickness now. Bye, right, little chicken. 15. Look at who is trying to steal the show every the single time. Off. Yes, Peg, we see you. Hmm. <laughs> She's off. 15 minutes have elapsed. It's exactly 5.05. Five is my lucky number. Okay, so bricks come off. Thank you, Bricks. Thanks, Bricks. Be back with you in a moment. You can see the little chicken legs over there where the feet used to be are the brownest and the crispiest. So the whole theory that I was pitching to you about it's hottest over there turns out to be true. I learned this from a food stylist. I'm gonna pick the chicken up from the drumsticks. That way you're not gripping something with the tongs that could rip the skin. The backside of the wings are gonna get really nice and roasty toasty now. Closing the grill again, another 15. And then we'll take the temp. Oh my God, the timer literally just started going off. Ready for the reveal? Ta-da! Well, it's under a brick, you can't even see it. Let's take the brick off, shall we? Mmm. Here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna check the temperature. And in order to do that, I'm gonna flip it back over to the bony side. And that way, if it has to keep cooking, I don't have to kind of risk anything with the skin ripping again. It'll just be on. Um, that side. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the temp in a couple spots. So we're gonna go to the deepest part of the breast, 163, which is great. And now I'm gonna go into the deepest part of the thigh without hitting the bone. Oh, oh my God, 160, 163. Yeah, this side's a little higher, who knows why. It's all good, she's coming off. I'm happy to see a few different things. There's a couple of like spots with charring, but we didn't burn. I am happy to see this beautiful color of the marinade showing through. It makes me very, very happy. I was very happy to see that we hit the temperature exactly straight on. Half an hour, give me a break. Who can do that? If you put the chicken over direct heat where it was directly over the coals, you would have had burned skin, you would have had burned herbs, and you would have had overcooked chicken, and you yourself would be super stressed. We're relaxed, little lady. Okay, in an effort to appease all of the vegetarians, I shall now move the hotter side of the grill to the cooking side of the grill, and the chickeny side of the grill will go back over the other side of the grill. Get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hot and replenished. Okay, I'm gonna earl up my cabbage, even though we earled before. Same thing, I'm not gonna do all the cauliflower. I wanna show you guys cauliflower and 
cabage. I guess if you didn't have a brick, you would use your cast iron skillet. If you position things kind of close together, then when you put the bricks down, you can get as many vegetables underneath as possible. It's not gonna be perfect. There's gonna be some veg in and some veg out. It's not as economical of a shape as the chicken is altogether, but I just kind of want to like bridge from one piece to the other. 10 minutes and then we flip. 10 minutes have elapsed. Let's see what's going on. Cruciferous under a brick. Oh my God, it's beautiful. So pleased, just so happy. Oh God, it's gorgeous. I can't with myself. Okay, 10 more minutes. We might check at five, just we don't want moosh. We don't want mouchade. We want a crisp tender. So the thing about the spatchcock chicken is sometimes you will pick it up by the drumsticks and the leg and the thigh will just separate from the rest of the bird by themselves. Uh, what I'm trying to say is it's really easy to carve because there's all of those bones and stuff. You're basically just like rearranging it. Take a utility knife and I'm going to go in between the drumstick and the side of the breast. It's beautifully juicy in there and see it's just li literally separating on its own. And then we have that piece. I will just put that over here, cut. Remember if you can't figure out where to cut, if you're forcing it, you're in the wrong spot. Because I took out the keel bone and the cartilage, right? Can literally go right in between I'm just gonna cut this in half. So I have like the top of the breast that has the wing and the other half of the breast. So right here, there's a little bit of the rib bones. They're tiny and easy to cut. This is a little chicken rib. Mmm, 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 mmm. Timer just went off. Cauliflower time. We're not actually going to eat those herbs, they're just there for flavor. Oh yeah. Mmm. Oh, crispy bits. Let's squeeze some lemons over this. I'm going to make a little omnivore's delight. Going to go with a drumstick, a little collie, a little cabbage. So here's what happens when you cut the cabbage like that. Some of the strings unfurl like beautiful cabbage ribbons that's something no one said before a little salsa v which you may remember from our grilled veg grain salad with herb sauce and feta this is that herb sauce delightful cauliflower bite first so it's that kind of texture when you push the fork through it's not going to slide right out it's still kind of crisp, tender in the middle, but the little outer guys are nice and floppy. So that's really what I was going for. Mmm. The acidity of the lemon and the green sauce are just so fantastic with those like deep, a lot of delicious warm spices, but also the cool spices of the fennel. And the caraway, I would say, is a cool spice, and the turmeric is a warm spice. Um, but with the lemon, it just is like, uh, uh, I don't know, beyond, delicious. Cabbage ribbon. Let's see how messily I can do this. I can do it. Mmm. 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 The cabbage has more sweetness, like the sweetness of the cabbage is coming out more and the cabbage is more juicy. So it's like, um, it's still got that crisp tender texture, but it's a different, it's a different kind of crisp tender. Highly recommend. Chicken drum. Mmm. 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 So juicy. So season finale of grilling season, I hope We've grilled animals, and I hope we've grilled vegetables, and I hope we've made sauces, and I hope we've learned about our grill, 
and we're just thriving. Here's the reality. This now going forward is really the best time to be grilling. Summer with the freaking mosquitoes, it's 100 degrees out here. I've sweated through multiple layers of clothing. Um, I did it for you, but I look forward to the temperature coming down and grilling outside in those cool, crisp nights. <laughs> and I hope the same things for you. Mm. Mm.